What if your home didn't just shelter you, but nourished you with resilient supplies of food, water, and energy every day of the year? In this video, we take a tour of a fifth world regenerative estate, showcasing what it looks like to build a property that cares for your family now and for generations to come. Five years ago, we were asked to design a food system for Morningside, this property, that could feed 20 people indefinitely. After some investigation, we discovered that this goal was not going to be attainable unless we fixed the water cycle. While the soils had nutrient, they had little carbon. The site's water cycle was broken and there was a limited flat space to build infrastructure, greenhouses, gardens, all needed to complete the project. So we got to work. Our projects always start with a detailed diagnosis of the property to determine where the weak links are. In this case, this property's well was producing less than a gallon per minute. The water was really hard, which meant it was not suitable for irrigation. And while the soils had nutrients in them, they lacked carbon. In addition, there were very few spaces for us to build all the necessary infrastructure to grow all this food. Once we understood the issues, we started doing a design of the full property. In our design, we followed the scale of permanence developed by PA Yeomans. The scale of permanence basically states that we start with geography, water, access, structures, flora, fauna, technology, business, and soil. One of the reasons we start with climate and geography is because it's the hardest to change. And so once we understood the context of the property, we got to work trying to figure out where we could find water on this property. We studied the topography and climate of the property using contour map generator and our climate analysis tools. From there, we mapped out where all the water was coming in and out of the property to see what interventions could be made. Once we had a hypothesis of where the water was coming in and out of the property, the homeowner confirmed that our suspicions were correct by showing us some home footage of his creek, which flows in the springtime. Once we saw this water flow, we knew that we had an opportunity to completely reverse the damage within the water cycle on this property. And from there, we knew that we could grow the gardens in order to provide the food required for feeding 20 people indefinitely. Between our digital assessment and the homeowner's home video, we knew that we could turn this property around. It turned out, like in most northern contexts, that snow melt was where the leverage was gonna come from. When spring melt occurs, it typically melts on frozen ground, meaning that there is limited infiltration. This means we can assume that the majority of what ends up as liquid water will end up in our catchment. All the water moves through the property and spring melt across frozen land in a few days. And if we can pick this water up in a series of swales and ponds, then we can put the water to productive use both in the ground and into long-term storages, which allows us to use it throughout the growing season. We ended up with four kilometers of swales, just under a hundred check dams and two ponds storing about four million liters of water, about one million gallons. The swales will hold up to one million liters of water when full, but this is only half the story. As the water enters the swale, it thaws the ground and starts the infiltration process. It's hard to gauge how much water the swales will inject into the ground, but we know it's much more than the holding capacity of the swale. The swales have overflows that eventually make it to the ponds in the middle of the property. Once the ponds are full, the system overflows again, eventually going back to the stream that led to the lake at the bottom of the catchment. In addition to the water capture and storage, we also set up the plumbing infrastructure so that we could bring water from the storage down to the house and gardens. This pipe comes from a central pond which allows us to irrigate the food forest, greenhouse and gardens with around 30 PSI, all without a pump. It also has the added bonus of being able to provide a long-term fire suppression function. The homeowner can turn on a fire valve in the event of a forest fire and run sprinklers around his house for around three days to a week in the event that they have to evacuate. When we build a foundation on integrated water harvesting, we build a property that can generate massive amounts of nutrient-dense food. A property that is drought-proof and climate-adaptive. A property that can defend itself from wildfire and other disasters. The four kilometers of swales that we installed on this property all eventually lead to this pond behind me. This pond stores about four million liters of water or about one million gallons. One of the challenges with this particular property and this region in general is that we have inconsistent meltwater. And so while that creek is flowing, we probably get literally millions and millions of gallons of water flowing through the property. It only comes for a very short period of time, which means that we have to be able to capture a large amount of that water and put it away for long-term storage in this pond. 
So this pond technically has enough water to keep the property hydrated for about three or four years, depending upon how much water we use in a year and how hot the particular summer ends up being. Now what's interesting about this particular pond is that we've tied it into a pipeline that runs the entire length of the property. And so we can get access to water at the bottom of the property without ever having to use any pumps. Inside this culvert, there's a pitless adapter, the same device that allows us to get water out of a well. And the culvert itself goes down about 20 feet. When we put this culvert in, there's a gravel lens that connects into the pond over there. And so the pond water has the ability to flow freely into this culvert. The pitless adapter is attached to a pipe that goes the whole length of the property. And so it's from here that we're able to access the water from the pond down by the greenhouses and the gardens. What's great about this is that this system will provide positive pressure to the gardens and greenhouse as well as fire suppression system, regardless of whether the grid has any power or not. So we end up with the ability to both grow food as well as the ability to defend the property from forest fire. Right now I'm standing on top of a swale mound and it may be difficult with the contrast of the camera to see the difference between the top and the bottom, so I'll walk through it. But basically when a swale is dug, we move the earth from over here into a mound here, which will eventually become a tree planting mound. This then creates a lower area which is where all of the water will convey into the pond, which is behind me. You can't see it in the camera right now. And once that pond is full, these swales will back flood, fill up to about 25 centimeters of depth or about one foot, and they will sit perched on the landscape and infiltrate into the land. This has several effects. Number one, we get a lot of water storage in the swale mound right here, which is really good for tree growth. Number two, we get deep water infiltration, which is going to recharge wells and make sure that the land starts to become hydrated again. And the third benefit, which I've kind of already mentioned, is that we end up with essentially eaves troughs on the landscape that will help ensure that our pond gets filled. So these swales intercept the ephemeral drainages that occur on the property that flow in the springtime for just a few days. And so these will help to bring that water that comes in a very short period of time into the pond, ensuring that we have a full water storage to get us through the next two, three, or even four years. What's really great about this system is that the water entering this hydrant is somewhere between 30 and 35 PSI, depending upon the level of the pond. The hydrant has a forestry coupling on the end of it, which means that we can add lay flat pipe rapidly around the house and then connect a series of sprinklers to protect the house in the event that there's a wildfire happening in the area. All the owner has to do after that is open this valve up and water will enter the lay flat pipe and provide a hydration lens all the way around the property. There's enough water stored in that pond to provide up to a week of hydration around the house, which means that in the event of a fire, this valve can get opened up and the owner can drive away and not worry about gas pumps running out of fuel or electricity getting stopped as a result of the fire. Be confident that when he returns, he's still gonna have a house to come home to. The garden behind me is the result of all of the hard work that we did to lay the foundation to make sure that we had sufficient water to hydrate this space. The garden features a food forest which wraps around the outside of the property providing a long-term windbreak for the inner garden. We also have a kitchen garden that's directly behind me that has all the typical herbs and vegetables that you'd use on a regular basis within your kitchen. Just behind that, we have an outdoor kitchen where we can gather all of that food and have parties and bring community together. And just behind that is our latest addition, the fifth space, which is our latest passive solar greenhouse to Fifth World. When people create these properties, one of the things they often forget about is creating these foundational layers, specifically the water ones. And when we get it right, everything just flourishes. So if you're wanting to learn more about how we build these types of spaces at Fifth World, make sure you hit subscribe and like the video and stay tuned. We'll be producing more content like this in the future.